For more than half a century, rocket engineers quietly agreed on something. There was one engine design so powerful, so efficient, and so brutally difficult that it was considered unbuildable. Not in fact, not in fact, unbuildable. Why is the Raptor engine called the holy grail of rocket science, and why did no one else manage to build one for nearly 50 years? To understand that, we have to start with what every other rocket engine willingly throws away. A conventional rocket engine works by burning fuel and oxidizer in a combustion chamber. But before that fuel can burn, it has to be pumped. And poping propellant to extreme pressures requires power. So where does that power come from? In most engines, you burn extra fuel. You tap off a small portion of propellant, run it through a turbine to spin the pumps, and then dump the exhaust overboard. That energy never produces thrust. It's lost. Engineers accept this loss because it keeps the system manageable. Simple enough to build, reliable enough to fly, but fundamentally inefficient. This inefficiency bothered engineers for decades. Because, in theory, you shouldn't have to waste any propellant. And that idea leads directly to the holy grail. The concept is called full-flow staged combustion, and it is the most extreme engine cycle ever conceived. In a full-flow engine, every single molecule of fuel and oxidizer passes through the turbo pumps before entering the main combustion chamber. Nothing is dumped overboard, nothing is wasted. Everything contributes to thrust. It's rocket science's version of perfect efficiency. And for 50 years, it remained almost entirely theoretical. Why? Because to make full flow work, you need two preburners, one for fuel, one for oxidizer. Each preburner partially burns its propellant to create hot, high pressure gas. That gas spins the turbo pumps. Then, Here's the insane part. Both streams are fed into the main chamber and burned again. This means all propellant is preheated, all propellant is pre-pressurized, and the combustion chamber receives fuel at extraordinary energy levels. In theory, this allows unmatched chamber pressure. In practice, it breaks everything. Let's talk about pressure. Most powerful rocket engines operate around 200 bar of chamber pressure. That's already extreme. The Space Shuttle main engine, one of the most advanced engines ever flown, peaked around 207 bar. Raptor operates at 350 bar. That's not an incremental improvement. That's a categorical leap. It makes Raptor the most power-dense liquid rocket engine ever built. And pressure like that doesn't forgive mistakes. So, why didn't anyone build one earlier? Because full-flow engines push materials, manufacturing, and control systems to their absolute limits. Let's start with the pre-burners. One pre-burner runs fuel-rich. The other runs oxygen-rich. Both environments are extremely hostile. Oxygen-rich hot gas doesn't just corrode metal. It eats it. Historically, oxygen-rich turbines were considered impossible to operate reliably. The USSR came closest. In the 1960s and 70s, Soviet engineers attempted to build a full-flow engine called the RD-270. On paper, it worked. On test stands, it nearly killed people. Materials failed. Turbines degraded rapidly. Control stability was fragile. The engine never flew. The program was abandoned. The conclusion was simple. Too complex, too risky, too impractical. The United States took that lesson to heart. NASA never even attempted a flight-ready full-flow engine, not because they didn't understand it, but because they understood it too well. And that's why the design sat untouched for decades. Until SpaceX. Raptor exists because multiple technological revolutions collided at the same time. First, material science. Modern superalloys can survive oxygen-rich environments longer than anything available in the Cold War era. Second, manufacturing. 
Advanced machining and 3D printing allow complex cooling channels and injector geometries that were once impossible. Third, and this is critical, computational control. Raptor is not just a mechanical engine, it is a software-driven machine. Thousands of sensors monitor pressure, temperature, flow rate, vibration constantly. The engine doesn't just burn, it listens. Let's talk about why full flow enables such extreme performance. In a normal engine, turbine exhaust is relatively low pressure. That limits how fast you can spin pumps. In Raptor, both fuel and oxidizer enter the main chamber already hot and pressurized. This allows incredibly high mass flow. High mass flow means high thrust, but more importantly, it allows that thrust to be achieved with lower temperature gradients. That reduces thermal stress. Ironically, the most extreme engine cycle is also the most reusable. That's the paradox. This is why Raptor is often compared to a Formula One engine. A standard car engine wastes energy everywhere. Heat, friction, inefficiency. An F1 engine extracts maximum performance from every drop of fuel. Raptor does the same thing. It doesn't accept losses. It weaponizes efficiency. There's another reason no one else built it. Cost. Raptor was brutally expensive to develop. Years of failures, exploding test stands, destroyed prototypes. No traditional aerospace program could justify that burn rate. But SpaceX isn't traditional aerospace. They iterate fast. They accept failure. They build, break, rebuild. Raptor didn't emerge fully formed. It was beaten into existence. And here's the final reason. Full flow only makes sense if you want full reusability. Expendable rockets don't need this level of efficiency. If you throw the engine away after one flight, simpler cycles are good enough. Raptor exists because Starship exists, and Starship exists because SpaceX is aiming for scale. Hundreds of flights, thousands of launches. At that scale, efficiency isn't optional. It's survival. So why is Raptor the holy grail? Because it uses every molecule of propellant. Because it achieves pressure levels no operational engine ever has. Because it solves problems engineers avoided for 50 years. And because it unlocks something bigger than performance. It unlocks economics. Reusable heavy lift rockets only make sense if the engine can survive again and again. Raptor makes that possible. This is why no one else built it. Not because they were incapable, but because the world wasn't ready. The materials weren't ready. The manufacturing wasn't ready. The software wasn't ready. And the risk tolerance definitely wasn't ready. Raptor is not just an engine. It is the consequence of modern engineering finally catching up with a 50-year-old dream. And it may be the engine that makes humanity multiplanetary. If this deep dive gave you a new appreciation for what Raptor really is, you're exactly who the Booster Bay is for. Here, we don't chase hype, we decode the engineering that changes history. Subscribe for more deep technical breakdowns, share this with someone who thinks engines are just engines, and tell me, what should we break down next? because sometimes the hardest problems are the ones worth solving.